Hi, and welcome to NVivo for your literature review. This online module will show you how NVivo can help you organize, manage, and write your literature review. Even though NVivo has typically been used during data analysis stages, recent software developments have created new opportunities to use NVivo during all stages of a research project. Coding techniques to organize information into themes and concepts, and queries to find text and analyze relationships between topics can be applied to literature reviews. This module will show you how NVivo tools and techniques can be used when writing and organizing a literature review. In this module, you will learn how to conduct a literature review with NVivo and what steps can be followed. How your EndNote library can be imported and how the sources and information you have in EndNote will be stored in NVivo. How to classify your sources to record relevant information about them, for instance, the type of study and the methodology. How to code your sources by themes, topics and authors. What text queries you can use to find text and code your sources according to keywords. Coding and matrix coding queries that will help you find a specific content according to topics and themes, as well as to analyze relationships between topics. And finally, how to create a model to visually represent your ideas. Some of the advantages of using NVivo for your literature review are You can import bibliographic data from Reference Manager software, such as EndNote. It will help you find patterns and themes within a variety of sources of information that then you can organize into groups and categories. The information in these groups and categories will always be linked to the original source of information. It also allows the researcher to see everything belonging to one theme at once, making it easier to retrieve information for the writing process. You can also see how much information you have in different sections, themes, or topics. It will help you discover relationships within your sources of information. And finally, you can also create a visual model to represent your ideas and findings. This diagram shows you how the literature review process can be conducted using NVivo. First of all, you will need to import all sources of information that you will use in your literature review. Sources can be imported manually, for instance, PDFs, reports and websites, or you can import your EndNote library, including attached files. If you have non-digital items, for example, books, you will need to create externals for them and summarize the main content. Secondly, you can classify sources and assign attributes that is, specific information about your sources. If you imported your sources from EndNote, this will be automatically classified, such as information about the author, year, journal, and so on. You can also create your new attributes and classify your sources accordingly. For example, you may want to record information about the methodology used or the theoretical framework of the source you're reading. This information can then be used to analyze the relationship between your topics and these attributes. Once you have imported or created your sources, you're ready to open them and start coding to find themes, topics, and theories. You will create notes to group evidence from different sources according to these themes, topics, and theories. Remember, you can also annotate as you go that is, make comments, and create a linked memo where you critique each source you read. Finally, you can run different queries to help you code or to explore relationships about topics. For example, you can run a word frequency query over selected sources to get a feel for what they contain and focus your readings. You can also run a text search query to find relevant content and code it at the same time. Coding queries will find source content relevant to a combination of topics. For instance, content that mentions two topics at the same time. While a matrix coding query will show you how themes are represented. 
This will help you compare topics and potentially find gaps in previous research conducted in your area, which will be a good starting point for your own research. If you already have an EndNote library and you have attached files to your references in the library, for example, the PDFs for each of your journal articles, then you can import your EndNote library and you don't need to manually import each of your sources into Envivo. I will use an EndNote library to show you how references and attachments are imported into your Envivo project. All attachments will be sent to your internal folders in Envivo. If a reference does not contain an attachment, it will be created as an external in Envivo. Referencing information, such as author, year, title, journal, and so on, will be created as attributes and will be stored in a source classification. Keywords, abstract, notes, and research notes will be created as memos. Each memo will be linked to each specific source. To import your library, first select all your references. The easiest way is to press Ctrl A. Then click on File, Export, and save your file as XML, as this is the type of file that Envivo will be able to read. I will simply save mine on the desktop and you don't need to worry about the output style. You will need to repeat this process if you include new references in your library. Close your library when you're finished. Back to your MBO project, click on external data from other sources and from EndNote. and select the XML file you created in the previous step. Click Open, and you will see the Import from EndNote window. In this window, you will have to select how you want to name the sources, usually by author and year, and then choose whether you want to create a single classification or different classifications based on record type. You may want to create only one classification or database to classify your sources or create one for books, one for journals, one for theses, and so on. I usually choose a single classification as this makes it easier when creating new attributes. Note the number of new records that Envivo will create. If you were repeating this process, you were importing your library again because you added new references to your EndNote library, Envivo will only create the sources that don't exist in your project. This means that you can choose to import your whole library all the time and Envivo won't create any duplicates. You can also choose to only import the new references or import by groups in EndNote. I also recommend you to untick the option Assign Attribute Values to Memos so you don't get duplicates in your classification. This is the result of the importing process from EndNote. As you can see, all my PDF attachments are now stored in the internals folder of Envivo. Remember that you can create subfolders for your internals and simply drag and drop your attachments to create folders and groups in Envivo. If I double click on any attachment on any source, as you can see, I can now read it and code it. If I click on my externals folder, I will find those sources that didn't have an attachment in my EndNote library. If I double click, for instance, on this book, you will see that the external is empty, but now you can click on click to edit 
and add a summary of the main content that you would like to retain from this source of information. If you don't like to deal with externals and have different sources in internals and externals, you can simply select your externals, drag and drop them to the internals folder, say yes to paste as documents, and your externals will simply become documents in your internals folder. If I double click to open the book again, it's empty, but I can click on click to edit and add a summary of simply type the main content or ideas that I would like to retain from this source of information. Note that some of my sources have a memo link attached to it. This memo contains the keywords, abstract and research notes that you had in your EndNote library. All memos are stored in the memos folder and are named using the same name, author, and year that you had in your EndNote library. For me, it's easier to open the memos from the sources simply by right-clicking on the source, going to Memo link, and selecting Open linked memo. If you're not happy with the content that Envivo imported from EndNote, or you would like to add your own abstract, critique, or ideas about this source of information, simply click on Click to Edit and make the changes. I will now move on to the Classifications menu to show you what happened with the referencing information. In Envivo, a classification is a database used to group your sources. Attributes represent variables or categories of information that can be used to classify your sources. Creating and applying classifications and attributes helps you organize your sources, and it is also helpful when running queries. If you click on Classifications and then Source Classifications, you will see that EndNote has created a new classification. If I expand the database or classification, I will see that the attributes are the same reference fields that you have in your EndNote library, such as reference type, author, year, title, and so on. If you double click on the name of the classification reference, the complete list of sources, attributes and information will be opened. This table can be exported into Excel by simply right clicking on the name of the classification and selecting export. You may not need all these attributes that were imported from EndNote. If you want to delete an attribute, for instance, the pages, simply select it, right-click, and select Delete. If you would like to add new attributes, simply right-click on the name of the classification or database. Select New Attribute. And now you're ready to create your new attribute to group your sources of information. I will create the attribute methodology that I will use to classify my sources according to the methodology used in that research study. Now if I click on values, as you can see unassigned and not applicable coming by default, but if you click on add, you can define your own attributes. For instance, qualitative, quantitative, and I will add a third one for mixed methodologies. When you're ready, simply click OK, and you will see that your new attribute has been added to the list. Then remember to assign values for your sources. For instance, this article by Fox used a qualitative methodology, and this article by Goodlatte used a quantitative methodology. 
if you clean the attributes that you're not going to use and only keep the ones that you will use, such as author, year, journal, and create your new ones, you will end up with a table where it's really easy to see what sources you have and see the information according to each of these groups. You can sort by types of methodology or other attributes, which will make it easier to find specific sources. For example, if you were interested in finding what sources employed a qualitative methodology. It can also be used when running queries to compare topics and find potential gaps. Coding is a process of identifying patterns in your sources and organizing them into coding containers or nodes. Nodes can contain as many references or evidence as you consider and are used for grouping information from different sources according to topics, themes, concepts, theories or empirical evidence. You will find NVivo notes particularly helpful when writing your literature review. You can open notes which represent specific themes or topics and read all the relevant information and evidence. Since NVivo will always indicate the source from where the information came from, the process of referencing and writing is also made easier. For instance, I grouped all the academic benefits for students participating in peer mentoring programs here. So if I double click on the academic benefits for mentors note, I will see all the information belonging to this topic or empirical evidence. And as I said before, MBO will tell me where it came from and how many references I've got from each of these sources according to this specific topic. If I click on the hyperlink, MBO will highlight in yellow that specific reference I coded so I can read it in context. Coding for a literature review is very similar to coding data for analysis purposes. You will use the same techniques and tools, such as coding into new or existing notes, double coding, merging notes and creating child and parent notes. For instance, as you can see here in my notes, I'm coding for benefits for mentors, but I'm also coding into further research ideas, literature review gaps, and what we know and what we don't know about mentoring. For instance, I'm going to code this evidence for mentors improving their social and communication skills by right-clicking on it, going to code selection, code selection at existing nodes. And I will code this as a social benefit for mentor and also as what we know about peer mentoring effects. Remember that you can also code into new nodes as you read. For instance, I could code this into a new note that I may name cost effectiveness of peer mentory. And I will locate under my key topics notes. When coding for a literature review, you can create the specific notes or categories that are particularly helpful when managing and writing a literature review. For example, you may code into a note named Further Research Ideas anytime an author mentions something that could be used as a further research idea. You can also code into definitions, literature review gaps if you find gaps in the previous research or studies conducted in your topic area, you can also create a note for justification of your research idea and other things such as what we know about the topic and what we don't know about the specific topic. Apart from coding by topics, themes, theories and empirical evidence, you can also code by author, which is particularly helpful when those authors are especially relevant or important in your topic area. For instance, if I go back to my sources, 
I have identified Topping as a main author in my topic area. I can create a case note for Topping using the sources of information that have been authored by Topping and then I can run a matrix coding query to compare what my authors have said about specific topics. To create a case note, you will select the sources that you would like to create this case note. So here I'm selecting Roscoe and Chi and also Topping. I'm going to right click, select Create as, create this case notes. And I would place these new case notes in my authors folder under my notes main folder. And we will create one node for each of these sources, which is simply a node that contains all the source of information coded into one place because I have different sources from Topping and I would like to have only one case note for this author, I would simply merge all the notes by cutting them and merging them into Topping. You can right click and go to Node Properties to change the name. And I will do this process for all the authors that are relevant or important in my topic area. Once I have these case notes, I can use them to compare how my authors talk about specific topics and whether there are any differences. As well as coding according to themes, topics, authors, or empirical evidence, you can also ask Envivo to run queries to find content, to search for keywords, or to compare topics and find relationships. All queries are stored in the Queries menu. And in this tutorial, I will show you how to run a text search query, a word frequency query, coding, and a matrix coding query. To start with, I'll click on Word Frequency. And Word Frequency queries tell you how frequently words appear, which will help you identify how many times authors have referenced or have talked about specific concepts. Word Frequency queries can be run on all sources or limit the number to certain sources you're particularly interested in. To make sure my query is stored in my project, I'll first click on Add to Project. And I'm going to run a word frequency query to find the 100 most frequent words in my literature review. I'll include the date. And the word frequency criteria, I'm going to ask and vivo to search in all sources. I will ask for the 100 most frequent with a minimum length of 4. If you wanted to run this query in specific sources, you will select selected items or items in selected folders in your internals. I will click on Run and the word frequency query tells me the 100 most frequent words and how many times they appear in my literature review. As you can see, PR is the most frequent word. And I could, for instance, right click on it and ask and be able to run a text search query or create as a note. This means that Envivo will find all the instances where my authors mention PR and create a note. As you can see, this list gives you a very good idea of what your authors are talking about. On the right hand side, you can visualize different aspects of the word frequency query, such as a word cloud, which will show the most frequent words in a visual way. 
Work clouds can also be exported just by right clicking and clicking on export work cloud. Back to the summary tab, if I find words that I'm not interested in such as also, I could right click on it and add to the stop words list. This means that next time I run this word frequency query, Envivo won't search for words such as also, the, or things that don't have any content or are not giving you any particular insight into your topic. The second type of query that I'm going to show you is a text search query, which is particularly useful for finding a specific words or expressions within your sources. And Vivo will also give you the link to the source and the opportunity to create a note with all the references containing that word or expression. I'll click on text search query and as usual I will click first on add to project and in this case I'm looking for the educational term scaffolding. Under text search criteria I will use scaffolding as the keyword, but remember you can also use the special operator such as end or not and near. Under finding matches, I will move the slider to extend words, so and people will use scaffolding or scaffold, but you can also move it to synonyms, specializations or similar words. I'm going to search in all sources, but remember you can also select items or items in selected folders. And I will click on Run to see the results of this text search query. In the summary, I can see that the source of information that mentions scaffolding is this article by King with 36 references. This guides me in my process of reading. If I'm interested in reading about this specific educational term, I will double click on this article and then Vivo will highlight the keyword across the whole article. So it's very easy for me to find the instances where this author talks about this term. On the right hand side, you can also see the word tree, which will Place the keyword in the middle and will show you the most frequent expressions of words that are used before and after your keyword. In this case, I can see a relationship between a scaffold and knowledge construction. So if I'm interested, I might just highlight that branch of the tree and double click. And then people will find the specific source that mentions that relationship. If I'm interested in creating a note from this text search query, I will go back to my queries menu where my scaffolding query is stored, right click on it and click on query properties. And I'm going to move on to query options. Here I can ask Envivo to create results as a new note. So Envivo will find all the instances where scaffold or scaffolding are mentioned and will code them into a new node. The location of this new node will be key topics. And I will specify that this node came from a text search query. Finally, I will ask Envivo to spread coding to custom context because I'm interested in reading that word in its surrounding paragraph for instance but you can also specify the number of words I'll click OK and run and these are the results of the text search query that is now stored as a note the last two type of queries that I'm going to show you are the coding and the matrix coding query the coding query will look at the intersection of two or more nodes. The first example I'm going to show you of a coding query is one when I'm going to look for the intersection of two topics or nodes. I will click on Add to the project and I'm interested in finding what I coded into academic benefits. But that is also a further research idea. 
and a coding criteria, I will click on Advanced. I'll click on Select and I will bring in the first node I'm interested in, which is Academic Benefits. I will click on Add to List. And then by default, NVivo will specify the intersection or operator AND. I will click again on Select. And this time I'm going to select the node for the research ideas. Again, I'll click on Add to the list. And as you can see, now NVivo is going to look for content coded at academic and coded at further research ideas. I will click on Run. And NVivo found this specific evidence or reference that I coded into both nodes. This is particularly helpful when you're writing about specific relationships, such as what we know about academic benefits, that is also a further research idea. The second type of code inquiry that I'm going to show you is the intersection between a topic note and a case note for an author. In this case, what we're finding is all the evidence for a topic is mentioned by one specific author. I will click on Add to Project, and I'm looking for academic benefits as mentioned by topping. And the coding criteria, I will click on Advanced, then Select, and I will find my academic benefits node. The second node I will bring in is a case node, so it's under my Authors folder. I will click on Topping, OK, and Add to List again. And in this case, NVivo found academic benefits as mentioned by Topping. Finally, one of the most interesting queries for literature reviews is a matrix coding query. This type of query allows you to make comparisons based on categories. Results will be displayed in a table defined by rows and columns. You can use topic nodes, case nodes as authors, or attributes to define the rows and columns of your matrix. And Vivo will produce a table with the number of intersections between each category, which is quite helpful when you're interested in finding gaps in previous research. And Vivo will also show you what content was coded at each intersection. In this example, I will show you a matrix coding query using topic nodes and attributes. I will click on Add to the project. And I'm interested in knowing how different benefits for mentors are if we consider the methodology of the study. So, benefit for mentors by type of study. So I'm going to use the methodology attribute and all the benefits for mentors nodes, such as academic, social, and psychological benefits. Under matrix coding criteria, I will first define my rows. So I'll click on Select. And I will bring in the nodes. Academic, psychological, and social. There is no restriction in the number of nodes or elements that you can bring into this matrix. I will click OK and add to the list. And now, if I click on Columns and click Select, I'm now looking for an attribute. So we'll have to go to my Source Classification, find my Methodology Attribute, and I will select Qualitative, Quantitative, and Mixed. Again, OK and add to the list and we are ready to click on Run. The matrix code inquiry is showing the intersection between the different types of benefits for mentors, academic, psychological, and social, that we coded as nodes, and the different types of studies, qualitative, quantitative, and mixed, that we stored as attributes. If you click on View, Node Matrix, and choose one type of cell shading, for instance, blue and white, the matrix is going to be highlighted, showing you the biggest differences. For instance, we can see that 
There are more academic benefits shown in qualitative studies, but not so many in quantitative and mixed. We can also see that psychological and social benefits have not been reported in quantitative studies. These numbers give you a really good idea about the gaps in your literature review and you can use that to justify your own research questions. Going back to the node matrix options, you will notice that by default the coding references is on. This means that the numbers of the matrix is showing correspond to the coding references or number of times that you have coded at each of these intersections. If you would like to know how many sources or authors have mentioned benefits, for instance, academic using a qualitative methodology, you will have to change the cell content to sources coded and all classifications. Finally, if you double click on any cell, Enviva will show you the content coded, which can be very helpful when reporting. Remember that matrix coding queries can be used with nodes and attributes, nodes and nodes to compare topics, or nodes and case nodes. You can also use framework matrices to summarize your data in a table format. Framework matrices provide a way to summarize or condense your sources of information in a grid that has rows for cases, for instance your authors, and columns for themes, that would be your topic nodes. Each grid represents the intersection of a case and a theme. In this example, I'm going to create a framework matrix to show the definitions by different authors. To start a framework matrix, I will click on the framework matrices folder under sources, right click on list view and select new framework matrix. I will name this matrix definitions by authors. And under rows, I will select my case notes which will be stored under my authors folder. These are four case notes for four different authors that I've considered are important in my topic area. I will click OK. And under columns, I will click on select and bring in the key topic note, which is definitions. I will click OK. And as you can see, this table is showing me the definition given by each of my authors. If you click on Analyze and Auto Summarize, and people will create the summaries in each cell, and then you could right click on the framework matrix and export it into an Excel format. This is the result of the framework matrices in an Excel format. As you can see, I've got the authors I considered for this matrix and their definitions. So now it's really easy to compare definitions, see how they differ or how they're similar. It is something that you can also integrate as a table in your thesis. Finally, Envivo also has tools to create models. When creating models, you can simply add new shapes and double click on it to add text. And also add shapes. To do this, you will have to select both shapes by keeping the control key down and then select one of the shapes. In this case, I'm going to create an associative shape. And if I double click on it, I can add text.
you can also choose to add project items and in this case you will be able to include any source memo or note that you have created in your project for instance I'm going to bring one of the key topics the academic benefits for mentors is a note and I have the option to include relationships see also link sources coded memo links and also the child notes if this was a parent note I'm going to ask and be able to also include in the model the sources coded and what and people did is it brought the note and all the sources that coded into that academic benefits for mentors note when you bring project items to a model these items are interactive which means that you can double click on them to edit them or you could right click and choose to open the item to open in this case the node The Explore menu also gives you options to represent your sources using charts, cluster analysis and tree maps. In this example I'm going to create a chart to show the distribution of my sources by year. So we'll choose one attribute and I'll select the attribute from my source classification year. I will use all attribute values except unsigned and not applicable and I will confirm that what I want is number of matching sources. You can choose a descending or ascending value. I will choose a descending value in this example. And this graph shows me the distribution of my sources by year. With a quick glance, I can assess the distribution of my sources, see if I have sources for my literature review that are updated, or I need to go and do searches in different databases to find updated sources. 